Let's discuss retail more. CNBC contributor Jen Niffen joins us, CEO at J. Rogers Niffen Worldwide Enterprises, and J.P. Morgan retail analyst Chris Horvers. Jan, did Ellison just jump a sinking ship? Yes, he did just jump a sinking ship. He went to the second best player in the DIY space. Um, unfortunately, he's up against a Triple Crown winner in Home Depot, so I'm not sure how well that's going Where to go. Where he spent 12 years himself. Where, and he probably wanted to run and didn't run. And so he's moved on to Lowe's now. I was a little surprised when he showed up at Penny's, quite honestly. And I knew he was really strong in the other side of the business. It hasn't gone particularly well at Penny's. Penny's is a struggling. I'm not going to blame Marvin. I think he did all the right things at Penny's. But I think Penny's is sort of a busted entity at the moment. And so I think it makes a lot of sense for him to go back to Lowe's. Whether that'll work well for Lowe's or not, I don't know, because I still think that Home Depot is the winner in that space, will continue to be. They've got all the professionals. They're the strongest player. I'm really surprised to see Lowe's up so much today, because I didn't think their numbers were good. Yeah. I mean, the, t the comp slowdown was there, but then again, so was the weather factor. Chris, do you agree with the market take on all of this, and that is sell JCPenney, buy Lowe's? Yeah, I mean, I think generally as you think about it, you know, Marvin just traded in a 92 Camry for a 2018 Mercedes. It's a much better industry by far. It's a duopoly. They have 50% market share. Department stores are structurally challenged. Mall traffic structurally challenged. And, you know, Pennies, from my understanding, doesn't have great real estate. So I think it's a great trade for Marvin. I think today's stock movement is relief. You know, it was down yesterday. People were expecting comps to be worse today. They didn't lower the guidance. Uh, and I think that's driving some relief. I think as you look forward, the question will be is when, when Marvin comes in on his first conference call in August, do we have to reset the margin structure lower and rebuild from that? Or does that occur at their December analyst day? Yeah, it was sort of interesting. They didn't lower guidance in preparation for that. Let's talk about some other movers, Jan. Tiffany seeing strong gains, really strong comp source sales. Is this the return of tourists into the United States, or is it something that Tiffany is getting right now about the product? I think both of those. We certainly heard from Macy's the tourist was back. We've seen MasterCard talk about the tourist being back. So I do think that helps them a lot because tourists is what really drives upper end businesses in America. But also, they're doing a better and job. And yet the dollar's rising again, so I don't know how long they can count on that. I don't either. Which could be a problem. Which could be a problem. Chris, it does feel like, you know, generally, retail has been a big loser over the past few years. But this quarter, there are some standouts. Is it overall better health of the U.S. consumer? Or are we just starting to see these turnaround strategies take hold at some of these big retailers? Yeah, I think, you know, the home, Depot, home, home improvement space has been uh, the fastest growing space. It grew about 6% the past two years. Lowe's has underperformed that, hence the reason from the Niblock to uh, Marvin transition. But look at Target's results today. Look at Walmart last week. Walmart doing over a two comp again. Target doing a 3% comp, uh, comp again on the heels of a three and a half in the fourth quarter. You know, to put that into perspective, it was the best holiday since 2005. Core retails were up 6%. So I do think the consumer is in a much better spot. And for someone like Target to put up that level of comp despite some weather headwinds is very encouraging. You know, the, the big question, and, and I also think that these retailers are becoming more competitive to Amazon with multiple fulfillment options. Target is a great example of that. You know, for the stocks going forward, you have to lap that record holiday. Uh, and right now, a lot of these retail stocks are heavily weighted to the fourth quarter or in purgatory because at this point, 1Q is so small relative to the year. What you do today uh, really doesn't matter. We want to get some visibility on back to school to assess the holiday outlook. Hey, Chris, you just did a big report on um, your sixth on Amazon and the impact on other retailers. You make the point that a rising consumer is helping to narrow the gap between e-com and bricks and mortar. But, yep. I mean, isn't the narrative on all of these prints that you can do pretty well but still get uh, bruised in the face, uh, as we see from some of these gross yep. margins? Absolutely. You know, Carl, that's ex exactly right. I mean, it's, a, it's an existential risk. You've seen great retailers like Home Depot and Walmart and Target all say, like, I'll basically say we won't get margin expansions, you know, flats the new up. And unfortunately for Target, one of the reasons why it's down today is because they did disappoint on the gross margin. But it's, it's an ex existential question. So, you know, as you look forward, the big question for someone like Walmart is, especially with, you know, the flip card losses is, 
can you actually see the earnings growth that the that the market's expecting, that the consensus is expecting when you have the packaged food and food space becoming much more competitive uh, and Amazon obviously with their with their acquisition of Whole Foods making a big push to grab the grab the consumer share of wallet. Jan, just to come back to JCPenney for a moment, a very small market value at this point, but tens of thousands of employees, some of them multi-generational. Is there anything you could offer them in terms of hope for this company? Is there any strategy you could imagine that could conceivably really give them some momentum? You mean if they call me to run it, what am I going to do? Yes. Well, <laughs> you're going to have to continue to close some stores, and you're going to have to continue to move online, and it's a very expensive process, and they really don't have the money to play in the game. It's expensive for everybody, right? This existential threat comment is a really good one. You keep investing, you keep investing, you keep investing, you do more business, but your ROI goes down. And when you're a troubled retailer and you're not a maximum taxpayer, the other guys who are maximum taxpayers that are now running at a much lower tax rate and reinvesting in the business and given lower prices are beating your brains out. So I don't see how we fix pennies in that environment because Kohl's is going to win, pennies and Sears are going to lose. It's just like Macy's is going to win, Bonton, Belks, Boscovs, Dillard's, they're all going to lose. And there can't be that many winners when it's all moving online. The guys that do it best win, the guys that are maximum taxpayers win, and the rest of the business has to give market share. And they give it to online, mostly. Okay, so before we finish up this conversation, Jan, I need to ask you about Bernie Sanders. The senator has a point about Amazon that he's making on Twitter. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, according to Senator Sanders, wealth increases $275 million every single day. Meanwhile, Amazon workers have to rely on food stamps and public assistance just to survive. This is what a rigged economy is all about. Amazon responds saying it pays $15 an hour wages. The average hourly wage for retail in this country is actually $13.20. You know what I like about that is he's not beating up Walmart, which is what we did for the last 40 years, because the Walmart family became extraordinarily wealthy, and they beat us up on what we paid Walmart workers, and yet the Walmart workers, just like at Amazon, were making as much as anybody in retailing and had as good of benefits as anybody in retailing. So is it a problem that we have low-paid workers in America? Yes. Is Amazon a problem? No. Amazon's a solution, just like Walmart's a solution. People live better because they buy stuff yeah, cheaper. Not That's a rigged a good system thing. if you can create 500,000 jobs. Guys, um, just a preview, I think, for what we're going to hear from in the midterm. I didn't sides. vote for Bernie, and I wouldn't vote for him if he was running, <laughs> so just so you know. Thanks for clearing it up. Chris Horvers, thank you from J.P. Thank Morgan you. and Jan Niffen. Always a pleasure. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.